Hello, so this is going to be another video about radiation. Um, and this is how much is bad for you and what are the risks, because this is something where there's lots of different answers online. And the general thing is there's probably a lot of truth to different ones, but a lot of the stuff of radiation is kind of theory, because obviously it's very unethical to kill people using it or expose them to certain amounts, even though governments have done that in the past, for the point of researching what where it becomes dangerous and all things like this. So. When you come to measuring radiation, most people think of Geiger counters, the scimitar pens, all this sort of stuff. And that's all well and good, but let's talk about when, you know, the numbers actually get into the human body. So I was just showing a little tiny bit of radium dust there, and as you can hear, it's actually fairly hot and scary. So, with radiation, there's several different things. There is obviously the initial risk, which is if you're exposed to a massive amount of it, dying of acute radiation syndrome, also known as radiation sickness. And that's where your body has just been so overwhelmed with radiation, your cells are just fried, basically, and your body can't repair damage done to itself. So that's when, you know, the body goes to replace cells, it can't do it because they've been so damaged by the radiation it doesn't know what it's doing. Um, that's a simple explanation, There's, it's obviously a lot more in depth than that. But and that's where um, Hype said a good thing, I think he called it the free, uh, or uh, it was the 1, 300, 500 rule. Um, well, the numbers will vary depending on the thing, because there's two kinds of measurements people use for radiation. The old-fashioned one, which I like, Bronkens. Um I think Americans pronounce it Rentgens. Um, some people like to pronounce it as though he was French, like Rongen, but um, I'm pretty sure it would be Rongen or Rongen, because he was German, and that would be harsh consonants. Uh, it's Wilhelm Rongen, if I remember right, the father of the X-ray, so if any Germans are in the comments, let me know how you would pronounce it in German, because I'll take your word for it, because he was German. So, Rontgen's there, the old unit, and I find Rontgen's very easy, because originally one Rontgen, or one Rontgen, was a, um, sort of equivalent to about an original chest X-ray that was pretty irradiating, um, and then what you'd have with Rontgen's is uh, basically you'd have different numbers, but 100 Rontgens is where radiation sickness becomes apparent for most people exposed to it. Um, 500 Rontgens is the point where you're definitely pretty dead. 1,000 Rontgens, you're totally dead. Nothing will survive that. Um, and Hype was saying that, you know, for a lot of people, 300 Rontgens is where they start dying from it. So, again, that's using that rule of, you know, the, the number where there's definitely a risk associated with it, then the numbers where it's immediately scary. So if we're using that with Rongans, um, you know, I suppose with Rongans it'd probably just even be like a number of one, that if you're exposed to one Rongan, um, you know, additional to what you'd receive in a year, that is probably at the point where you're going to get, you know, risks associated with it, then yeah, going up to 300 plus Rongans, 100, 300, that's where, you know, it becomes really serious. The other unit that's used is the Siva or Grey, it's actually the same unit, I don't know why it has two names, but they exactly equate each other, so they are the same unit. This decimeter pen, pen sees um, sieverts and grays. I will hold it up to the camera, and we will see if you can see the numbers through it, but you might not, because the, you, these you generally have to shine a light for the other side. But anyway, how this works, this one's in center grays, and center grays, same as a centimeter, 100 center grays in a gray. Um, so with the sievert system, you have micro sieverts, the most modern Geiger counters or radiation measuring things start off with um, the micro sieverts. So you have micro sieverts, 1,000 micro sieverts in a millisievert, 1,000 millisieverts in a sievert. Uh, sieverts are the really scary numbers. Um, basically, humans can't survive more than a couple of sieverts generally. So if you were converting it from Rongans, because um, I've actually done all the maths on this weirdly and I can remember it, there's 114 Rongans in one sievert or one grey. So for example, when you get to that 500 Rongan point, that's probably about three or four sieverts. Um, but anyway, with millisieverts, it's generally, they think most people are exposed to about one to three millisieverts per year, two probably being average, it depends where you live, how many flights you take in a year, all those sorts of things. Um, and then they think generally an additional millisievert to that, or an additional one or two millisieverts to that in a year, is probably going to massively increase your chances of developing cancer, as in by a few percent. Um, so it, it's probably not hard to imagine that, you know, if you're exposed year on year to one or two extra millisieverts, then, yeah, your cancer risks really go up. So, the problem is with the cancer sort of thing, is that, so as we were saying before, 
with Rontgens, with Sieverts, we know the numbers that are generally going to do you in if you're exposed to them in a short period. You know, think the firefighters at Chernobyl. Think, you know, people exposed to radiation in intense amounts from nuclear bombs who would survive the blast but be killed by the radiation. And that's the acute radiation syndrome, sort of sickness numbers. Um, so where it gets confusing, this is where there's a lot of scientific debate and we don't really know, and it's obviously completely unethical to experiment and find this out, is that what amount does radiation uh, exposure lead to cancers down the line? Now, there's two theories. I think both probably have validity to them. Um, one theory basically says any radiation you're exposed to increases the risks, even if it's a tiny you know, dice roll risk increase, it's still a risk. So for example, if you hold something radioactive in your hand, even if it's not that radioactive, because you're exposing yourself to more than background, um, you know, every second you're holding that, you're rolling the dice, basically every radioactive decay. If we get the Geiger counter back out, um, we'll put that on, we'll put the radium near it. Basically every single one of those ticks is a, you know, percentage, a very, very tiny percentage that you are going to get a cancer later down the line from that. Pretty scary thought, but apparently, you know, it's such a negligible number for most people that nobody has to really worry about it. Then, the other one, as said, is where people basically think there's more of a linear kind of thing, where at the low levels there's like essentially no risk, and then the more you get exposed to, the greater the risk goes up. That makes sense, the linear graph, but again, there's, you know, outliers to all this and things like that. So I don't think we'll really know, and as I said, it's completely unethical to um, basically experiment on people, even though the US government did that, and I'm sure the Soviets did, and, you know, quite a few other governments did, at various points where they basically on purposely irradiated people to see what risks or defects they would get. Um, you know, horrible stuff, but... So, what... What the point is of this video then, is when, you know, what radiation is harmful to your health. If we go on one theory, any radiation is harmful for you, or at least any radiation increases the risk of a problem down the line, whether it be a cancer. But again, you know, like I'm the same as most people, if, if you had something that would necessarily kill you straight away, or something where 30, 40 years down the line you may develop a cancer from it you wouldn't otherwise have done, I would probably take the cancer over immediate death. Um, then obviously there's the linear theory, the more you're exposed to, the greater the risk, um, and obviously the more the radiation numbers increase, the greater the risks down the line of cancers, that makes sense to me as well. And then there's the bit we know for fact, that when you're exposed to massive amounts of radiation in a very short period, you develop the risk of dying pretty quickly from acute radiation syndrome and things like that, just basically where the radiation has done so much damage to your body in the short run that you can't survive it. You know, it makes sense with people with fire, if you think about things like that, that if you've got horrible third degree burns over a lot of your body, you know, the chances are you're going to pretty much die from that, just due to the damage done. So think about it as a similar thing with radiation, you know, if you're exposed to so much that you're so badly burnt in theory by it, that, you know, it's going to get you. Um, very few people die of acute radiation syndrome. Um, generally, every now and then, somebody will be involved in a criticality accident and get uh, die from it. Um, you know, like saying, if you have a nuclear disaster like Chernobyl, things like that, people who are the first responders who may not be aware of the risks or are brave and going in any way because they need to save lives, they're the sort of people when they're exposed to massive amounts that, you know, that would happen. Now, of course, the other risk of radiation, as I've mentioned before in other videos, is inhalation and ingestion of radioactive particle, particles, and that's what kind of the sievert system is meant to be better on, than the Rontgen system for. So if I get that dial, uh, uh, sorry, vial of radium, if you see like these little bits of radium paint sort of dust in there, radium goo, if that was to get into your body via inhalation or ingestion, then it suddenly becomes much, much nastier. The reason being that with radiation, you obviously have alpha, beta, gamma, and x-rays, uh, alpha being the least penetrating, gamma being the most penetrating, so it goes alpha, beta, gamma, and then x-rays kind of sit between beta and uh, gamma, but x-rays are sort of their own thing, but not really, anyway, that's a, that's a subject for another video, but... For example, alpha radiation can't penetrate your skin. If you ingest it, or inhale it, it's pretty much non-stop hitting your insides, very scary. Um, so if you're going to be exposed to one Rontgen, for example, or one millisievert, whatever unit you want to use. If that were, you would rather be exposed to one external, you know, one hour of, you know, if it was one Rontgen per hour, you'd much rather be exposed to that for an hour externally from gamma rays hitting your body all across than you would have, you know, a one Rontgen per hour bit of, um, 
you know, like essentially what would be that in an alpha or beta emitter inside you, because that's not going to go away after a while. You know, the issue is, of course, and this is why radon gas can be considered dangerous as well. Radon gas is a very strong alpha emitter. So when people are breathing in an environment with radon gas, although they're breathing it in and out, and it's not sticking in your lungs like tar does from cigarettes and things like that, the problem is that every lungful, while it sits in your lungs where it has radon gas content, you know, you have a massive amount of alpha disintegrations just, you know, bombarding your lungs. Um, you know, and that, that's why it's dangerous in that regard. So yeah, so basically with radiation, we'll sum it up. If it gets in your body, it does a lot more harm than an external source, but any radiation is bad for you. But obviously the problem is that when it gets into your body, for some, sometimes it can stick in there for years. For example, strontium-90, iodine-131. If they get in, they go to the bones or thyroids, um, and they can cause massive problems. When you're exposed in terms of cancer risk, the greater the numbers, probably the greater the risk. Um, but, you know, some science says, you know, any risk is, you know, bad, so if, in theory, if you lived in an area with very low background radiation, you never played around with radioactive samples, your cancer risks from that would probably be very, very low. Then if we look at what actually we know for definite kills you, acute radiation syndrome, a couple of sieverts, you know, a couple of hundred ronken, it's going to vary from person to person, it's also going to depend where those gamma rays hit you, for example, and things like that. If your brain or vital organs are being hit by the gamma rays, it's going to do way more damage than if it hits your hands or your feet. Um, for example, with old x-ray technicians, lots of them used to do x-rays of their hands to check the machines were working. Over the years, lots of them would get necrosis of their hands and things like that, and require amputations, or, you know, they would lose fingers and things like that. But I suppose that, that wasn't as bad as if they were x-raying their head every time to check it, and then they'd have definitely had something get them, you know, that way. So hopefully this video summed it all up for you. As I said, if you wanted a complete, definite scientific answer, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you, but you could listen to literally two-hour university lectures where they tell you the same thing. There's conflicting science on it. I've basically outlined most of the points for you. We know for certain if radiation gets into your body through inhalation or ingestion, it does more damage than when it's outside, and that makes perfect sense. We know when you're exposed to massive amounts of ionising radiation outside of your body, that causes lots of problems in the short run, where it can kill you in the short run. That makes perfect sense. But then the long-term cancer risks, this is where the science kind of sometimes conflicts or there's arguments in the science. And I think there's validity to both claims. So, you know, if, if you've got a Geiger counter, iron chamber, decimeter pen, all that, you can see if you're being exposed to it and certainly minimise your risks. But in terms of how much is bad for you, it depends if you get it all at once, if it's external or internal. Um, you know, or how spread out it is. But in general, I would go by the um, idea that any radiation is bad for you. Avoid it wherever possible if you can. Unless you're a weirdo like me and you think, ooh, playing with something that makes a Geiger counter click is fun.